Hello everyone. I want to give you an introduction how PLM change management is handled in SAP S4HANA. The following functionalities are available in S4HANA on-premise, starting with release 2020 FPS1, as well as on cloud systems, starting with S4HANA Cloud Edition 2111. In this video, I want to give you an overview of the process to set up the change record in your system. I will mention the most important tasks you need to consider before setting up the new functionality. In this session, only slides will be showing without any system demonstration. To go into more details, we will cover all the topics in additional videos, including a customizing view as well as a system demo. Please note that the following video should only give you a rough introduction into the process of setting up the change record. Most of the points should be discussed and worked out in more detail with experienced SAP consultants. First of all, you need to be aware of the really basic settings of the change record. You should be answered, for example, the following questions. Which number ranges do you want to assign to the change record? Do you want to count from zero to endless or is it a more complex number range necessary? Or do you maybe need different number ranges for different change record types? Secondly, what kind of change record types do you need? Which change items should be included in which change record type? Thirdly, do you want to use the process route or the flexible workflow on the change record? If yes, for which change record type do you want to use the process route and for which the flexible workflow? Fourthly, which references you planning to use for the different change record items? A reference differentiating, for example, a change or a creation or a deletion of a change objects. Lastly, is the processing status needed? If yes, for which change record type you want to enable the processing status? A processing status needs to get maintained on change object level and is providing information if an item change is possible or needed or not required. One of the next important questions would be all about your change record status network. So for example, which statuses do you want to have available? And also, which status actions are required? To get a more detailed view to your status network, you should also define how the status and status actions are connected to each other. And also important question would be, do you want to integrate the change master into the change record? If yes, on which status do you want the change record to create a change number? And on which status you want the change number to get closed? Do you maybe want to have change masters not only on change record header level, also on change item level? If you're planning to use the digital signature, you also need to define for which status change the digital signature is required. You should also be aware of the signature strategy. Is a single signature enough or a multiple signature required for a status change? If you're talking about the status network, also merge and splitting should be covered. Do you allow merge and split? If yes, for which change record types and for which status? The next topic is about the custom attributes in the change record. This means that you should define which custom specific fields you want to have available on the change record header as well as on the change record items. You have not only the possibility to define and create own fields, you can also integrate SAP specific fields from other components which are available on the database tables. These fields can then be controlled via the change record field control. Questions you should answer for the dynamic field control are which fields you want to have mandatory, read only, in edit mode or hidden in which user status. You also need to think about the classification. Do you want to have classification for the change record available? If yes, which kind of classifications are necessary? Is it necessary to assign one or multiple classifications to a specific change record type from the initial status? The next three topics are all about the process route. First, you need to think about the teams and responsibilities. Is it enough to only assign workflow items for a specific user or already existing HR entities? 
Or do you need to set up special teams, subteams and functions with the app of the teams and responsibilities? The second question regarding the process route would be, do you need background tasks? If yes, what kind of background task is required? A background task could be, for example, to automatically execute a status switch for the change record. Also, the question to the process route template is important. Do you want to have global process route templates available? If yes, how should they look like? Which teams and users should be considered in which template? In the blue boxes, you see some overview about more detailed change record specification. The first one is BIF Plus. Do you need BIF Plus adjustments? This could be, for example, a BIF Plus based process route template determination based on change record status or change objects. Second, you need to find out if some special business add ins, so called bodies, are required for your process. Is, for example, some special authorization check? or some special logic on a status or signature cancellation required? As next, you also need to talk about additional customer enhancements. Is there maybe some functionality required in your business process, which is not covered with the change record and needs to get implemented? Lastly, you can also think about the integration of the change record to additional or external applications. Do you maybe want to create or change change records from a different system or self-developed applications? If yes, the API Business Hub will offer you a lot of options to cover such requirements. Finally, you also need to make sure to have a sufficient transport strategy available. This is required for the whole process of setting up the change record. It's required to make sure your changes and enhancements are correctly transported from a development via a test to a productive landscape. Thank you everyone. I hope you now get a first overview of what kind of topics and tasks you need to consider in the process of setting up the change record. As already mentioned in the beginning, we will cover each topic in more details in the upcoming videos. Then you will also have the possibility to see the different customizing entries live in the system.